chair of center here, the Hawaiian Tell FCU starting lineup scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Kanoa Leahy and Lisa Strandma coming to you courtside as the Rainbow Wahine get ready to take on the Lumberjacks of Northern Arizona, Hawaii. Unranked in the ABCA Top 25 for the first time since the final poll in 1992. Counting up the also receiving votes, Hawaii in the number 26 spot, and it is Northern Arizona starting off the match with an out serve coming off the palm of Lauren Jacobson. And first to serve for Hawaii, Sarah Mendoza, the senior libero from Santa Barbara. She attacks Jacobson in the back row. It goes right side to Sydney Kemper, one of the standout players for Northern Arizona, but a miss hit on the set, and so Hawaii quickly up 2-0. A lot of confidence for this Lumberjacks team coming in 9-0. They haven't exactly gone up against a murderer's row of opponents, but still a team that is hoping to do some good things here in the Stan Sheriff Center tonight, and a good thing there, Peyton Bach able to get the point for the Lumberjacks on the middle set. Peyton Bach at 6-3 does a nice job finding the corner. You gotta remember the Lumberjacks may be just a little bit nervous coming into this arena this evening. First time in the 40-year history of the Northern Arizona program that they have traveled across the Pacific Ocean to play here in Hawaii. Olivia McGill with the dink, good scramble play by the Lumberjacks, and then a block by McGill. So Northern Arizona still on the attack. It is Kemper dug up over the net. It's pinballed back and forth. Now Hawaii with a time on Olivao, blocked and roof. And that is a theme for Northern Arizona on that right side. Sydney Kemper, who is coming off of an MVP performance at the Lumberjack Classic, where she averaged 1.4 blocks per set. And up on that block with her, Taylor Stevens, they really stuffed that ball low and tight to the net. Stacia Williams with the serve, and it turns into an ace. So after Hawaii jumps out 2-0, the Lumberjacks surge ahead. And that's exactly what the Wahine were going to need to do is pass nails tonight. They're going to back up and they're going to bomb some serves. Stacia Williams with the serve. It is Mano Olevao, a perfect pass, and she'll get the set on the outside off the fingertips. Diving save, though. Well done there by Janae Vanderplug. And Northern Arizona able to get a point out of it. That was an ad lib sequence there for Northern Arizona. Absolutely a great defensive play by Flu. Get on the up. And then just a lucky play, literally dribbles over the top of the net. Taylor Higgins not able to find the ball. Credit the kill to Lauren Jacobson. So four serving two now. And it is Calais Greeley with the pass. Here's Nikki Taylor from the back row, and she just scraped the edge of that end line. And again, the passing way off the net, forcing a set to the back court to Nikki Taylor. Nikki Taylor getting her first start in Hawaii's last official match against San Francisco on Sunday. Had 14 kills on 41 swings. Dave Shoji thought that was a little excessive, but really had no choice in that match against the Feisty Don squad. Middle set that Stevens, she's blocked back, and in the scramble play, Hawaii almost had left that one uncovered. So now Taylor from the right side, chance now for Northern Arizona. Kemper off the block, kept alive nicely there. And then it is from the middle, Olivia McGill pushing it off of that block and out. And the connection again with Olivia uh, McGill in the middle, she's a little earlier, the set's a little too low and tipping. She's becoming famous for that, but she had a great warm up tonight. Olivia McGill, sixth in the nation in blocks per set coming into this match as Taylor Higgins sends it into the net. And that's a point for Northern Arizona. That's one of the things we're going to see Taylor Higgins do. She's going to go back there and she's going to go for her serve. She's going to go for that jump serve. She leads the team in service aces with 18 so far this year. Here's the serve by Kemper. Greeley tight to the net. Higgins has to play it off of the net. Now a free chance for the Lumberjacks. Set goes left side. This is Vanderplug, but it was a little too high for her outstretched reach. And one of the co-captains on the team whiffs on that set. So a point for Hawaii, and it'll be time on Olevao retreating back. You mentioned Taylor Higgins leading the team in aces. Mano Olevao is second with 14. Jacobson, good pass there. Left side, here's Vander Plew, covered up. Can the Lumberjacks return it? No, they cannot. Well done up front, McGill and Nikki Taylor. That's a pretty formidable size block there. That, that is a huge block, and the sets are low and tight, and they were ready for the set to go out to the outside, low and tight for a complete stuff block. Lumberjacks not able to recover that ball. So six serving five, here's Mano Olevao. 
Pass again by Jacobson. Pushed over on the second touch by the setter Barton. Hawaii keeps it alive. Now Greeley puts it down. Greeley was a workhorse in Hawaii's exhibition match against Toyota Auto Body, a professional team from Japan two nights ago. She got 52 attempts in that match, Lisa. That is a ton of swings. And Greeley, you know, she is so confident. She has been an immediate impact as a freshman on the outside there. You see her season numbers. Amano Oliva with a serve, and it's a tough one, and it's an ace. Diving attempt by Stacia Williams, but it was for not. As time on Olevao really has established, just like Taylor Higgins, a weapon from behind the service line. She really has, and it really proves her leadership as well. She's going back there and just jumping some bomb serves right now and really trying to motivate her team with her serving. 4 0 run for Hawaii, making a five spot. Five unanswered. Thanks in large part to Taylor Mano, uh, to Tai Mano Olevao. And again, she's just putting some serious heat on that. She's going after it. Full swing for yet another ace. Jump serve again, that one. Unable to get over the top of the tape. And sometimes you, you think after a couple of aces, you got to take something off. The momentum gets going, you got to back off just a little bit. Kind of like a second serve in tennis, if you will. Make sure it gets in. Here's Vanderplug with the serve. Mendoza had a little trouble with it, so the bump set from Higgins to Greeley, and she soft touches it over. Now Jacobson blocked by Taylor, but Nikki Taylor got into the twine. And Nikki Taylor penetrating a little bit too far over the net, was gonna argue with the ref, but decided I guess it's not worth it. She definitely posts a huge block there on the right side. So now here's Janae Vanderplug with the very short floating serve. McGill had the pass, and it's Greeley off the block. Taylor swings and pushes it down to the floor. Looked like there may have been a chance that she caught a piece of that net, but it wasn't cold. Yeah, I don't even know if the down ref was truly watching that. Ken Murphy up off of the bench questioning the call. You got to take a look at that, wondering if there truly was a net on the attack. Ernie Ho on top of the ladder. Ryan Sakagawa is downstairs. West Kawachi, Sam Montalvo, the line judges. Tatiana Ponce with the serve for Hawaii, up three. Middle set to Stevens, right there is Taylor. Higgins picks and chooses, goes outside to Greeley. Down the line and in. So steady. And Scott Wong was talking to me before the game, assistant coach for Hawaii, and he said the thing about Greeley is she doesn't exert a lot of energy when she swings, so that's why you can set her a bunch of times throughout a match. Very true. The 6'2 freshman just bettering the ball went past her left shoulder, and she just went right down the line with the ball. Effortless swing by Greeley. There's Stevens in the middle, got blocked back. Free chance now for Hawaii. Ponce the pass. Where does Higgins go? Right side to Taylor against a solo block. You can forget about that one. And you know, that right side attack is a low, lower set to the right side, and Taylor just getting the better of that ball. Already three kills on four swings for Nikki Taylor. Hawaii up five. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the Kaiser Permanente keys to the match. Lisa. For Northern Arizona, it's crowd control. Their whole season last year, they had 6,000 total on the whole season that came to watch them play. Tonight, they will play in front of as many fans that have come. They've just got to keep the ball on their side of the net and control the crowd. Hawaii, I'd love to see them from start to finish. Start strong and finish strong. Well, Hawaii has started strong, hitting 417 here in this first set compared to 077 for Northern Arizona. Jacobson dug up by Ponce, kept alive by Taylor, and a free ball sent Northern Arizona's way. Here's Jacobson again from the outside, got over the block that time. It formulated a little bit after the fact, and so that is a point for the Lumberjacks. Jake. But Hawaii also a couple of service aces from Taimano Olivao. Jacobson doing a nice job. She, she has an interesting story. You know, she was at San Jose State as a freshman. She played every game. A new coach came on, and they took her scholarship away, and she ended up back at Northern Arizona. There's Kalea Dolfo in the middle, so getting her first swing and getting her first kill of the evening and a short-lived sequence that time offensively for Northern Arizona as Hawaii gets the side right back. Nikki Taylor sends that one into the net. So a four-point differential here in the opening set. A couple of tune-up matches for both teams before they venture into conference play. Northern Arizona out of the Big Sky Conference. They were preseason pick tied for first with Idaho State this season. And Adolfo, the Molokai slide in full effect. Adolfo on that back step, uh, doing a great job taking off a of one foot and going right between the seam and the block. One of the two seniors on the team showing her leadership. Here is Greeley set to serve. 
14 serving nine, floats it deep. Bumped straight up in the air by Vanderplug. And then a swing from way off the net by Kemper. Kept alive by Hawaii. They go out to Manuel Vau. She's blocked. Mendoza there. Higgins, back row to Taylor. Dug up by Vanderplug. Bump set, and from her shoes, it is spiked over with an opportunity for Hawaii as Kalea Dolfo hammers it down. Jacobson couldn't get a good swing on it, and it basically turned into a free ball for Hawaii. And Kalea Dolfo having a great connection, a kaboom with Taylor Higgins. You can see the excitement. They're finally getting that, their connection a little bit better each time out. Yeah, Dolfo has had some strong starts in some recent matches, but just like what you talked about in the Keys, we'd like to see that continue through the duration. Here's Kemper, had the stutter step because of some traffic underneath. And she hit it out, so Hawaii with its biggest lead of this opening set. It's now 16-9. And interestingly enough, you can hear Dave Shoji on the side here yelling, no, no, it's a bad set. He doesn't want the blockers going up so that they don't get used or tooled, if you will, on the block. Here's Greeley. That one fell off the net. Lumberjacks go to Vanderplug out of the back row. Diving save Mendoza. Taylor. And that one finds the floor right in front of Jensen Martin. So another kill for Taylor. As she now has four kills on six swings, no errors hitting 667. Another 4-0 run for Hawaii, and they're in control here in this opening set. The series record is sponsored by Aston Hotels and Resorts. This is the first ever meeting between Northern Arizona and Hawaii. And they have done it up. They came in on Wednesday, a couple days early. They went snorkeling. In fact, they went straight from the airport to Hanauma Bay. Uh, and then yesterday, uh, visited Pearl Harbor and then went out to Waimea Bay as well. So doing it up here in the islands are the Lumberjacks. Out of the timeout, Hawaii up eight, Greeley with the serve. Pushed over on the second touch. Well done there by the setter Jensen Barton, a savvy sophomore at 5'9". And Kalea Dolfo kind of falling asleep. Dave Shoji getting up, talking story. He's not happy because Jensen Barton is actually back row, and she's not allowed to attack that ball. Her hand cannot cross the plane of the net. That's what this discussion is all about right now. There you see Jensen Barton in the back row right now, right back. She's showing right back, but she's actually middle back. So she, she jumps and attacks there on the replay, and she cannot do that. So call was made, and he's not going to back down. Ernie Ho's going to stay with his call. Greeley with the pass, knuckled over by Taylor. So advantage here for the Lumberjacks. They go right side, Kemper, and she puts it down. And that's Kemper's first kill on the evening so far. She has really been their go-to girl MVP of their tournament last year. It's her first kill on the evening. There is a service error by Northern Arizona, so Hawaii gets it back. But specifically, the rule regarding that setting attacker, back row attacker, is it do you get above the net, or is it just if you jump? What, what, what is the, the diagnosis there? Correct. You cannot be above the plane of the net. You cannot cross above if you're backcourt and make a kill or hit it over in so, front of the 10-foot line. So Ernie Ho basically ruling that she didn't get above the plane of the net, which is... What Dave Shoji was arguing, another service error for Hawaii, so it's now 12 serving 18. And that call very judgmental. Here's Mendoza the pass. Higgins sets up McGill. She missed the court wide. Was there a touch? Dave Shoji wants one. And no touch being called. Oh, there was a touch called. I think they actually ruled a net violation. And I think that's what Ken Murphy is actually up asking. What was the call? There's Ken Murphy in his second season, 46 years of age. Spent the seven previous years prior to going to Northern Arizona at UTEP. And so another service error for Hawaii and a six-point differential. But there's some confusion on the last couple of calls here from each head coach. Now Kemper with the serve. Pass Mendoza. Higgins goes middle to McGill. She got way up there, but a great diving save by Williams. Vanderplug, though, misses outside the antenna, so a point for the Rainbow Wahine. And it's nice to see a perfect pass by Mendoza there so that offensively, Hawaii has lots of, when they're in system, they can go to everybody, but you got to know they're going to go to McGill. Seems like a good call, the way she's been hitting the ball. Good pass by Manuel Eval, the overpass, and McGill knows what to do with it. Smacks it down to the Terraflex, and Hawaii back up eight. And Manu Olival really forcing, putting some heat on that ball, forcing an overpass, and McGill just takes care of that. So 21 serving 13. 
Another tough serve, and it results in a chance for Hawaii, but McGill couldn't play it tight to the net. Wait, the save by Higgins. This one's still going. Manoli Val the save in the back row. So bump set to Greeley, and that's kept alive by Jacobson. Lumberjacks on the attack. Vanderplug through the block and down. I would say three-fourths of the, player on, the players on the floor thought that that sequence was pow, but it kept going. And that's what the great scramblers do. Here we see McGill getting that ball. Taylor Higgins down getting it, and they just rat a tat that ball back over. Middle said McGill, the dink. Pancake saved by Williams, and Jacobson touches it over. Diving save, Higgins, well done. Now Greeley from the outside. Jacobson off the ricochet, couldn't maneuver it. And that's another point for Hawaii. Some great effort we're seeing out there on the Terraflex. And you know, some great defense. And talking with Coach Ken Murphy before the game, he actually said their strength is defense. He said, you know what? One thing I'm really proud of is that we have really turned our defensive game around. Back. They're tops among Big Sky teams in kills per set and digs per set. So doing it on both sides of the net. Save there by Manole Val. Greeley tried to find the deep corner. Vanderplug was there. Now Jacobson flying in. Rejected. Kalea Dolfo with Taylor at her side. And you know, again, that's a huge block. I'd have to say return to sender on this one. <laughs> she just gets completely blocked, stuff blocked at the net. Strong now. Ponce with the serve. Hawaii closing in on this first set. Jacobson split the block that time. Right in front of the effort of Mano Olivao. And what you're going to notice is the set was a little bit more inside, so it wasn't forced all the way out to the pin, which really doesn't give you a lot of places to go. They quickened it up, and they actually beat the block on that play. Jacobson now with four kills on eight swings. And a wide serve from Taylor Stevens. And so Aloha Ball here in the opening set for Hawaii. Nikki Taylor back to serve. She gets it in. The pass by Kemper. Set will go outside to Jacobson. Dug up by Taylor Greeley. Able to keep it in the court. And Taylor sends it over. Here come the Lumberjacks. Jacobson against a solo block. And again, Quickening that set up, Lisa. Quickening it up on the on the offense when they dig on transition play, when they're digging a ball, they're sending it out a little quicker. So there you see Kalea Dolfo not quite closing the block because of the speed of the set. Still, Northern Arizona, a lot of ground to make up here. The serve by Barton, pass Mano Olevao. Higgins goes out to Greeley, blocked. Popped up in the air by Higgins. Now Taylor from the back row tried to go hard angle, but went a little too hard. And a point for the Lumberjacks, so it's not done yet. You know, really what they're trying to do is just create momentum on their side of the net so that if, if and when this first game is over, they've got the momentum. And there's an ace, so add to that momentum. 24-18, Hawaii leads. Just trying to close out this first set. Northern Arizona has yet to drop an opening set this season. Again, coming in 9-0, so they're very close to possibly losing their first first set of the season in a substitution is Claire Marie Anderson. Out of Punahou goes in for defensive purposes, replacing Nikki Taylor. Step out to Adolfo, off the block and out. And that's how this one ends. So Northern Arizona putting up a bit of a towards the end, but Hawaii finishes the 25-18 victory in set number one. Northern Arizona dropping the opening stanza for the first time this year. OC Sports, presented on Oceanic Time Order Cable, is sponsored by Strong and Hawaii Honda Dealers. Welcome back to the Stan Sheriff Center. UH Athletics reaches out to you online each week with updates and promotions through its HMail e-newsletter. To register, visit hawaiiathletics.com and click on the HMail button. It's simple and it's free. Look at the Rainbow Wahine huddle. Let's check out how it works now, presented by Central Pacific Bank. Lisa. So taking a quick look here at Tai Manu Olivao, who's done an excellent job from the service line. Great toss. She's from the middle back. She puts some serious heat on the ball, forcing an overpass. And Olivia McGill says, thank you very much. One of the best sets of the night. And that, my friends, is how you set the tone with a serve from the back service line, setting up for an easy kill. McGill, one of four Rainbow Wahine with at least three kills in that opening set. They hit 414. Even got a couple of service aces from Taimano Olevao to go along with that tough serve there. 
On the other side, Northern Arizona hitting a buck 33. But what'd you make of Hawaii's performance coming out the gate? Well, I like it. I like the energy that they're forcing from the service line. I like that they're communicating. I think they're getting a little bit beat on the block, but I think they're the one thing that they have to do better is they have to pass that first ball better so that they have more uh, offense from the get-go. And I have to say that I think the Lumberjacks were a little nervous. I mean, coming in this evening, you know, it's a huge arena. We talked about this. They're 9-0. They're coming in. They're an experienced team, but they also don't play um, in front of this many people in such huge arenas often. Yeah, their home arena, Roll Activity Center, seats 1,200 compared to 10,000 here at the Stan Sheriff Center. And a net violation on the side of the Rainbow Wahine, and that is a bailout play because Hawaii was about to enjoy what essentially was a free bowl. And I think they're a little stunned. They're just questioning again. Dave Shoji up kind of chuckling a little bit like, really, who was in the net? Yeah, Olivia McGill had the palms pointed upward as well. Here's the serve by Stacia Williams past Mendoza. Middle set McGill was below the net, so she dinked it over. Diving pancake save by Williams. Hawaii with it again. McGill, this time the set was a little higher, and she was able to pound the point home. And exactly, that's it. The set was higher, and the first contact, the pass was right on target. Great defense by Williams, spreading it out for the pancake dig. She's had a couple of those tonight. I'm extremely impressed. She has read that dink over the middle very well tonight. And yeah, the transfer from Cal Poly had a career high 23 digs in the opening tournament against Tulsa. Taylor hits it into the twine. And Taylor getting a very interesting approach on the ball. It's almost like it's past her right arm. So she's chasing the ball outside of the antenna. And she's just a little off on the right side. You saw her before the match. She said her elbow feels about as good as it has all season. As Kemper actually bopped one of her teammates on the serve. She almost served her in the back of the head. But Nikki Taylor saying it feels good. She says she feels pretty close to full blast. She's ready. When you have to sit out and wait, it is not fun, and she's just ready to play. Higgins with the dig on the Vanderplug attempt. Now Greeley from the outside. Deep corner, yes. And you know what? That's almost impossible defense. She might as well pat that thing because she goes over the block, and she hits it into what they call the five box. It's the fifth position on the court, and it is an unbelievable shot. Nine-plus matches into the season, and a star has certainly been born in freshman Calais Greeley. And Northern Arizona can't return the serve, so strike it up as an ace for Sarah Mendoza. And Hawaii really, again, setting the tone with some tough serves and really forcing the Lumberjacks to be scrambling. They need to slow it down with something here. Kemper with the pass. Tracking it down as Barton goes outside to Vanderplug. That's dug up by Manuel Leval tight to the net. Hawaii just gets it over. Here's Vanderplug from the outside. Diving one hand save. Greeley played off the net by Adolfo. Good scrambling sequence for Hawaii. Now the step out to Stevens. Mendoza returns it. Stevens again on the step out. Dug up by Manuel Leval. And Hawaii has worked the advantage to their side. Greeley against a solo block. Northern Arizona gets it across. Beautiful rally here. Taylor finishes it. And that's exactly what kind of rallies that the Rainbow Wahine have earned. Great defense on both sides of the net. And Nikki Taylor with an exclamation mark making the fifth point for Hawaii. 4-0 run for the Rainbow Wahine. It's a nice pass by Kemper. Step out to Stevens. Really got a piece at the net. Bump set goes to Manuel Leval from the back row. Dug up on one knee by Jacobson. Here's Vanderplug. Blocked by Adolfo. Vanderplug got a swing on the second touch, and that's dug up by Manuel Leval. Now Greeley. Roofed. Roofed by the setter, Jensen Barton, the 5'9 sophomore. Posts a solid block up there, and Greeley thought she might be able to go over the smaller of the two, so she went for the line, not this time. Vanderplug with the serve, diving pass by Mano Oleval. Can Mendoza get it over? No, she cannot. That's an ace. And that's actually an excellent serve. I think that the Rainbow Wahine really struggle with the short serves. When you look at how they're lined up right now, there's a huge puka in the middle. And watch her try to go for that ball again. This time Mano Oleval handles it, but it's tight to the net. Greeley has to 
free ball it over. Jacobson from the outside, that set was missed time. She was thinking quick, the set went high. Exactly, on that second ball, you, it's very interesting what the Lumberjacks are trying to run here. On the second ball, they're trying to quicken up their offense off of the transition, but just some missed timed hits. Here's Jacobson, that much better time, and you see the result. Jacobson having a nice night this, this evening, really hitting high off the hand, seeing the court very, very well. She's third on the team in her kills. And again, she's out of San Jose State. Her brother Eric plays basketball at Arizona State. He's a 6'10 forward. So they got some of that going on in the jeans as well. And there's Greeley again. It is becoming repetitious. It is, and I'm telling you, it is a very, very difficult shot to hit. You look at how deep that is into the corner. She has a, a long, slow arm swing to the ball. The blockers are actually coming down when she's attacking the ball. Five kills on 12 attempts, one error for Greeley. So another efficient night building up here. Williams the pass on the Greeley serve. Middle set goes to Bach. She goes off the block and out. And Bach looks like she got a touch on that, actually, with her second kill out of the middle. The tallest player on the team at 6'3". An all-tournament selection at the Lumberjack Classic. That was the last tournament that Northern Arizona played in before coming to Hawaii. Manole Val off of a trampoline, got way up in the stratosphere, and then goes off the block and out. And, you know, she hit that ball high and hard, and it almost came back down into the court. We talked about the effortless swing and approach of Kalei Greeley. Mano Olevao is a little bit different. There is a lot of kinetic energy built up when she swings. She is very explosive. She puts everything into her swing. She comes in very on a very aggressive approach to the ball. Middle set goes to Kemper. Diving one-hand save. Taylor Greeley from the back row. Two-handed by Vanderplug. Bump set goes to Jacobson. Tight to the net. Rattled around, and it drops on the Northern Arizona side. Credit Higgins, McGill right next to her for keeping that one off of the Hawaii side of the net. And, you know, Higgins so quick. Uh, Nikki Taylor, excuse me, grabbing that ball with a one-handed dig. Maybe a little bit of beach defense there by the sophomore outside hitter. Here's Jacobson from the outside. Block didn't get up. Again, that quick outside set has worked numerous times here for Northern Arizona. Well, it really puts pressure on the middle blocker to get out there quicker. There you see Miguel. She just cannot seem to get out there and close the block. Here is Jacobson. Taylor hit it into the net. Northern Arizona pulls to within one again. Lauren Jacobson, a sophomore from Chandler, Arizona, will serve it into play. One of five players on the roster that list Arizona as a home state on this Northern Arizona team. And an out serve there. And Lauren Jacobson and Peyton Bach are best friends, and they went to high school together, and they decided to go to different colleges. But again, Jacobson going to San Jose State, new coach, did not renew her scholarship and opted to return back to Arizona. Here's Taylor Higgins. Overpass, McGill couldn't put it down. Jacobson kept it alive. Now right side, and Kemper finds the floor. Sydney Kemper from Albuquerque, New Mexico, entered the week third all time at NAU in career block assists and ninth in total blocks. And if she gets an all-conference selection this year, she would be the first player in program history to be all league four years. McGill gets it back for the Lady Bows. And McGill showing her athleticism, hanging up there a little longer than the block. Five kills so far this evening. She's taped up on the right side of her leg and her knee this evening. It looks like she might be hurting a little there. Coming in with a 414 hitting percentage. Middle set, Stevens! You shall not pass, says McGill and Taylor. Well, I'm not so sure. This is a huge front lineup. You got McGill, Taylor, and Greeley in the front there. That set is way too tight. It's like, give me the key to get out of the closet. <laughs> it's just too tight. Here's Manuel Leval. They go right side to Kemper. She just has to punch it over. Higgins can decide. Goes right side to Taylor. Straight down to the terra firma. So this is a great rotation for the Rainbow Wahine. Tai Manuel Leval really putting some pressure from the backcourt, serving some jump bombs and a huge front block. 
You see Isabel Gosar going in for the first time from right there in Flagstaff, the site of the Northern Arizona campus. Hawaii with the opportunity. Here's Greeley. Again, the block was laid, and if you go solo against Greeley, you can almost forget about it. You know, she has such great court vision. She saw that the middle was late, but she also saw that they did not take her line. The blocker let it let it slide. Kemper did not hold her, her post. Hawaii back up five. And an overpass by Williams. Higgins middle to McGill. And this rotation is starting to prove very difficult for the opposition. Hawaii with its largest lead of this second set. Welcome back to tonight's Jack Fact. Putting the poll in perspective, get this. Only 100 out of 328 Division I collegiate women's volleyball teams have appeared in the top 25 of the ABCA. Only 55 have been ranked in the top 10. Only 18 have ever been ranked number one. Only six have ever been ranked in all 33 seasons. Hawaii fits every one of those categories. It just goes to show what an amazing run it has been under head coach Dave Shoji. Those are some big numbers. I didn't have any idea that there were that many teams that have not been ranked in the top 25. Of course, Hawaii not in the top 25 for the first time since 1992 here this week. But maybe a chance to get back up in there depending on how they perform, and that'll help. Time on Oleval with the ace. Michigan State coming into this week, number 25, lost earlier today to LIU Brooklyn. So a chance maybe for that 25 spot to be back up for grabs. Absolutely, and it's just going to keep going back and forth. You work your way in, you find yourself out. Outside Vanderplug dug up by Manole Val. Here's Greeley from the outside, block and roof. We were talking during the break, though, Lisa. You really like that rotation and, and what it possibly presents for Hawaii going forward. I do. I like that rotation a lot because Ty Manu Olivao is putting some heat on the serve. you got Sarah Mendoza in the back row along with Nikki uh, uh, Taylor Higgins. And then your front court is just huge. you got McGill, Taylor, and Greeley. That, this is a great rotation. Net violation called against Hawaii. That's about the third or fourth time. That time on, on Taylor, and she's saying, no, Nikki Taylor, she's saying, I did not net, getting a little frustrated. You pointed out, though, that rotation, this is probably the first time they've been able to play in that rotation because of the injury to Nikki Taylor to start the season. Olivia McGill pounds it home for Hawaii. You also had time on Olival not in the lineup on Sunday for religious reasons when Nikki Taylor did make her first start of the year. And then when they played Toyota Auto Body the other night, Nikki Taylor sat out. Absolutely. And so this truly is the first time that these six players have been on the court, besides practice of court, in a game-like situation. I think this is the team that Coach Shoji and staff really have been wanting to put on the court, but have been not allowed to due to all these different circumstances. It is looking pretty formidable. Nikki Taylor able to plug it through the block and down. She has seven kills on 14 attacks. And Kalea Dolfo re-enters the game as a middle blocker. And again, the front row extremely big and strong right now for the Rainbow Wahine. Mendoza forces a pass tight to the net, but well done by Jensen Barton to improvise. She was the Big Sky Conference Player of the Week the week of September 1st and leads the conference in assists per set. And only a sophomore, she just jumps and dumps that ball over. And there's an ace served up by Janae Vanderplug. And you know, that's exactly what the Lumberjacks need. They need to serve tough balls if they're going to work their way back into this five-point deficit in game two here. Vanderplug entering the game, tops on the team with 14 aces, but a service error there. That is service error number six for Northern Arizona. Hawaii has five on its side. Here's Nikki Taylor, Kaiser High School graduate. Outside it goes to Jacobson, block, touched over by Barton, but that was just a bit of bad luck. It tightrope walked the top of the net and found its way out of play. It was, it was a great idea if it worked. It was not a great idea if it didn't work because there was absolutely nobody there. There you see Kalei Greeley looking like I just got beat. We'll take a timeout. Hawaii up seven, set two. Find the perfect gift for every occasion at Big Island Candies. Visit them in Hilo at Ala Moana Center or click on BigIslandCandies.com to view their entire collection and place your order today. Welcome back to the Stan Sheriff Center. That is the family of associate coach Scott Wong. And there's a look at a very dapper associate coach for the Rainbow Wahine program. 
gotten his fifth season, did his playing days at Pepperdine University. Also the Sand team head coach as an ace is served up out of the timeout by Nikki Taylor. Well, Gee, do you think they're going to serve the same area again? Because they've scored two points in a row right over there. Let's see if she goes right back to that right back. Biggest lead of this second set for Hawaii, already up one set to none. Williams pass. The set goes outside to Jacobson. The touch by Higgins, but nobody had her back. And you know, back to that serve. If you score off of somebody, you serve them and you get an ace, wouldn't you think you'd go right back at them? I mean, that's, the, that's what I call it as. Make a point, then challenge them again and serve the same person. There's Hannah Hill making her first appearance of the match. 5'10 senior with the serve. Step out Adolfo, touched it over. Knuckled up in the air by Balk. The swing by Jacobson from off the net. Mono Oliva the save. Higgins tried to push it over on the second touch, but Balk said, uh-uh. Go ahead. And a little mismatch. You know, Balk at 6'3 and Higgins at 5'9. Definitely a mismatch. One of the only ones I've seen Taylor Higgins not dump down. Mm -hmm. Balk, high school teammates with Lauren Jacobson, her teammate now at Northern Arizona. They both attended Hamilton High School. Hawaii getting it back. And now we're seeing a couple of substitutions for Dave Shoji as Kendra Kelsch will check into the match, and so will Keani Posse. What do you make of these moves? Well, Kendra Kelsch will take over as setter, and she's going to get some setting opportunities, and Posse, of course, into the front court. She's going to lean into that right front, I believe, and be the primary blocker. It is Kalei Greeley back to serve. Always takes a few extra breaths after she gets the whistle signal. Now Kemper with the pass. Set middle, goes to Balk off the ricochet. Kelsch keeps it alive. Greeley sets up Manuole Val, and she puts it off with the hands and down. And doing a great job from a set that came from over and behind her, just bettering the ball, if you will, hitting high off of the block for yet another kill. She takes something off, but she just goes high off of the outside hitter's right hand. Credit Greeley for handling that set as well. Showing some of her all-around skills. Easy pickings for Kalea Dolfo. And you know what caused that? Again, Greeley from the service line, putting a lot of pressure, serving tough for an overpass. They're out of system. Everybody's sitting around playing campfire defense. Well, she plays a little hoops too, right, Kalea Adolfo? That was a two-handed dunk right there. There you go. Aloha ball for Hawaii here in set number two, Greeley. Slaps it over, Vanderplug the pass. Outside Jacobson, blocked and proof. Access denied, Kalea Dolfo finishing the deal for Hawaii in set number two. So the Rainbow Walking Net headed to the break, up two sets to none. And looking to possibly open the broom closet. OC Sports, presented on Oceanic Time Order Cable, is sponsored by Bank of Hawaii and Kaiser Permanente. Welcome back, everybody. Let's take a look at the McDonald's match stats. Hawaii up two sets to none, and they've been dominating. Hawaii truly dominating out front in the kills, out almost um, in every percentage. As you can see, the hitting percentage, excellent at 370. Blocking could pick it up a little. Digs out digging and service aces to errors. Five service aces with five service errors. And Northern Arizona, I really feel, has not just quite come into their own. These numbers don't truly show a team that's 9-0. They have played much better and had better numbers so far this season. This is not a good reflection of this team, and I think they're going to come back a little stronger here in Game 3. Is that just nerves? Is there something more to it? I mean, this is a team that plays at 7,000 feet above sea level in Flagstaff, Arizona. I mean, obviously, going up there like the University of Hawaii football team is about to do tomorrow, uh, playing against Colorado in Boulder, having to go to elevation, that's a little bit more difficult physically. But what are the, the changes like if you come the opposite way? Absolutely. I've, I've never done the opposite, but I will tell you, there has to be opposite. The ball might drop down a little bit quicker on you. It might not stay up in the air as long. You see a lot of the mistimed plays by this team and numerous outserves this evening by them as well. There's Nikki Taylor from the back row, and she hit it into the net. So Northern Arizona off to the 1-0 start. And you had mentioned earlier in the evening, Savannah Ka Kahakai not in the match, or obviously with an injury. Um, she played 33 games so far this year. A great contributor, great passer to the team. I think she is missing 
on the team tonight. You heard the corner crew talking about wanting to maybe see a little bit more consistency in the passing game, and that's probably part of it, uh, the void left by no Savannah Kahakai, and it looks like that'll be the case for at least a couple of weeks with a sprained knee suffered against Toyota Autobody the other night. Here's Kemper from the opposite position. Good scramble play, the dig by Taylor. Now outside Vanderplug, that's dug up by Greeley. Manuole Val, she's in the cheap seat saving that one. Now Higgins sends it over, free chance for the Lumberjacks. Right side, Kemper gets a solo block. Greeley again to save over the net. Northern Arizona goes to Kemper another time. Greeley another save. Higgins to Taylor, soft touch. Williams keeps it up for Northern Arizona. Now Vanderplug block. But she's able to find the floor on the Hawaii side of the net. You know, some great defense going on on both sides of the court, but give credit to Kalei Greeley. She might be a big girl, but she's playing middle back. Uh, excellently in time on Olivao hustling that ball down. So two serving one, Williams slaps it over. Mano Olivao dug up by Williams. Here's Vanderplug against a solo block by Higgins, and Higgins came into the net. And, and she knew it immediately. She came down and she looked at the ref like, yeah, you caught me. Vanderflug doing a nice job on the outside. She's been quiet offensively so far, but so far out to a good start here in game three. Yeah, hitting negative 0-7-7. Manole Vau almost botched up the pass. Hawaii has to send it over free ball style. Vanderflug over the block. Taylor got a piece. Greeley traces it down. Another free chance for the Lumberjacks. They go outside to Vanderplug again. The dink works despite the effort of Nikki Taylor. And this is where we talked about keys to the match. Start strong, finish strong. They came out and really played really fast and strong in games one and two. So 4-1 in favor of Northern Arizona trying to stay alive here in the Stan Sheriff Center. Welcome back. Let's go inside the numbers presented by Levitt, Yamani, and Soldner. The number is three. Hawaii's national rank in team blocks. 3.20 blocks per set, and a lot of that, of course, because of that young woman, Olivia McGill. Sixth in the nation in blocks per set, singularly, coming into this week. But it is Northern Arizona with the 4-1 lead here in set three. Mano Levao trying to get it back off the block. Williams there to save for the Lumberjacks. Backhanded over by Kemper. So advantage Hawaii. It's Taylor from the back row off the top of the tape. Northern Arizona will be able to formulate a return. Vanderplug diving save Taylor off the ricochet. And Greeley two hands it over. Right side, Kemper finds the floor. And the, the Lumberjacks really coming out and putting some serious pressure on the Rainbow Hane, Ohini. And Dave Shoji up and making some substitutions here, just trying to slow things down, change yeah. things up. Claire Marie Anderson coming in once again for Nikki Taylor. Five serving one. And that sequence, it was Northern Arizona on the offensive the entire time. And that one's San Juan. And there's the golden rule. And there's the changeup that Dave Shoji was wanting. He was wanting to slow the pace, slow it down a little, and immediately sends Nikki Taylor right back onto the court. Here's Higgins. Has the ability to get some points back, and she's able to give time on Olival the opportunity to do just that, pounding it home for a Hawaii point. I'm sure Ty's saying thank you very much, Taylor Higgins. That was a perfect set. Three kills on nine swings for Mano Olival. And that one just placed down to the floor by McGill after the tough serve by Taylor Higgins. Taylor Higgins again going back there and really just ripping that ball, getting the green light to go ahead and jump serve. A high toss. Vanderplug overpass. Taylor didn't get everything on it. So the Lumberjacks will be able to forge a response. Hawaii middle set. McGill slow touched it. Pitter pattered around. Now back on Hawaii's side. Taylor, and that was a heavy swing. And you see the result. And you know, she just gets to that ball with a one quick step approach, and she really got a, a hold of this ball. That's probably the best hit she's had all evening. Her team leading ninth kill, in fact, match leading ninth kill for Nikki Taylor. Vanderpool. And a net violation again. And they're going to get Nikki Taylor again. 
and it's really hard to see if she's actually in the net. It must be pretty light because she's determined that she's not. She's coming off the net saying, I did not touch that net. Kemper the serve, and she serves it into the net. So Hawaii, the beneficiary of the freebie. But you see Nikki Taylor's right arm. That was the injured elbow, heavily taped. And so it creates kind of an elbow pad effect, and that could be what's getting into the net, and she might not even be able to feel that. That's very true. It, it could be it. It is quite large. It definitely extends out of her uniform. Manole Val, that was, that was violent, that serve, and it results in another ace. And again, she is really in tune with her serve tonight. It is on. She's in the what I would call the UC state. She's really ripping the ball. Four service aces in this match for Manu Olival. Again, forcing the overpass, McGill slams it to the floor. A net violation called on the side of Northern Arizona. Didn't matter, another point for Hawaii. And a timeout taken by Ken Murphy as he sees the momentum shifting to the Rainbow Wahine side of the net. Time now to take a look at the Mid-Pack Petroleum leaderboard. This is Big West Conference blocks. Blocks per set category. Hawaii with two players in the top five among Big West teams. 1.67, Olivia McGill, that's also sixth in the nation, and Kalei Adolfo not that far behind at 1.15. Well, that's amazing. Sixth in the nation individually. Great luck, team. Out of the timeout, Mano Leval took something off of that serve, still forced an overpass, but that time in a rare moment, Olivia McGill wasn't able to put it down. Credit Taylor Stevens for putting up a block. Taylor Stevens leads their team and the Big Sky. She was their top middle blocker in blocks last year. McGill that time got a little extra height on the jump, but still. Northern Arizona able to forge a response. That time, though, Nikki Taylor putting up the wall right next to McGill. And again, a huge Hawaii block. Olivia McGill getting out there, closing the block. Nikki Taylor posting a nice block there. You see her, she's very happy about sealing that and staying out of the net that time. And good to see her feeling good on that. That was what Dave showed you was a little worried about, even though she was cleared to play, was sustaining those kinds of collisions at the net, if you will, with that right elbow. And that's exactly what caused the inter uh, injury, was a block. She was in free play and she went up to block and her elbow got taken out. That's what kept her out for the first few weeks of the season. You see the heavy bandage job on that right elbow. Eight serving nine. Here's Adolfo from the middle, and she's had herself quite an efficient night. That's her sixth kill on seven swings, zero errors. Very smooth in the middle, looking very crisp and very sharp. Reminder, she is the only three-year letter winner. This is her fourth year starting as a player on this team. Hitting 857 in the match. Jacobson from off the net goes into the twine. Point Hawaii. And you're right, Northern Arizona just looks to be a little out of sync. Yeah, they just don't seem to be all in, in sync, is a good way to put it. You know, they're not as smooth and as crisp. They're struggling with their first ball contact, that first pass. Middle set to Bach, blocked. Kept alive by Williams. Here's Jacobson. A lot of swings for her, and that time it results in the positive as a point. Jacobson doing a nice job with her ninth kill. Only a sophomore. Played also on the sand volleyball team in San Jose State. Now 22 attempts for her. Manole Vau the pass. Bump set goes to really tight to the net. Played it off the block and Manole Vau sends it over. Can the Lumberjacks put together a transition? Jacobson off one leg, blocked by Adolfo. She'll get a second crack at it. Goes over the block, Manole Vau the save. Higgins, high and away to Greeley. Down the line, but wide. That looked like it may have caught a piece of that sideline. Dave Shoji thought so as well. We know that set was a little bit tight and really went for it. She took a big, heavy, hard swing and just missed the line. And the serve by Barton, past Greeley. They go back row to Taylor. No blockers up, and that's a Hawaii point. And that's a great offense off the right front, hitting out of the back row. Nikki Taylor does such a nice job. It's almost like she's coming out of the front court. She really puts some heat on that ball. 12-10, Hawaii already up two sets to none. Let's see if they can make a quick night of it. Middle set goes to Kemper. Sydney Kemper, who can pretty much go 
whatever direction along that net. She can hit from the outside, opposite, and that time in the middle, able to get her fourth kill. And, you know, she started as a middle blocker and was moved to the right side, and she does a really nice job moving the ball around. Really with the pass. High and away, Manoli Bao up the ladder and down the chute. Mary's crisp on the outside, doing a great job hitting deep into the court. Here we see a quick replay of Ty actually finding the seam in the block there. Doing a fabulous job on the outside. Mendoza serves now. Right side, here's Kemper, the dink, diving pancake save Mendoza. And it winds up as a flat-footed kill for Mano Olivao. And give credit to Sarah Mendoza for the pancake diving dig here, rescuing that ball. Higgins getting a nice set, and Ty Mano Olivao knowing that she just had to keep that ball in play. Yeah, give that point to Sarah Bear. That was pretty well done. Showing why she was made the all-tournament team last weekend. And then she serves up the ace. So the Sarah Mendoza show has officially begun here in set number three. Sarah Mendoza out of Santa Barbara, California. A 4-0 run for Hawaii. Set middle, ball. Goes off McGill and down. Announced attendance tonight, by the way, through the turnstiles, 4,027 here on this Friday evening. Really the pass off the Williams serve. McGill, that was a hammer. And we talk about connection. That is a great connection. She seriously has some hang time. On the three set in the front, Olivia McGill showing she can hit from all areas on that front court. Higgins, difficult serve to handle. Vanderplug has to free ball it over. Mendoza the pass. Where does Higgins go? Right side to Taylor against a solo block, and she went up and over it. And Taylor just having her way on the right front. Really, nobody has challenged her at all on that right front spot. Doing a really nice job. You'd never know that we that she has not played in the first, what, nine matches of the season. Yeah, pretty amazing. 17-12, Hawaii up a handful and looking to shut the door in sweeping fashion if they can finish things off here in set number three. Time now for the Fujitsu air conditioning cool play of the match. So here we see Sarah Mendoza reading this dink like a book with a great pancake, sprawling it out, Higgins, and Ty Manuolivao knowing she doesn't have a great approach on the ball and just puts it where she knows. And again, Mendoza laying it all out, and Ty Manuolivao putting it deep down the line for a, yet another kill. And that is our cool play. You know, we mentioned it in the pregame, but uh, Dave Shoji, the winningest head coach in the history of the NCAA, is as of right now, not the winningest head coach in the history of the NCAA, Russ Rose of Penn State. The Nittany Lions winning a double header today. He actually surpassed Dave Shoji. He's now one in front of the 40-year head coach, Dave Shoji, who has 1,134 victories going into tonight, and Penn State with their victory today. In fact, two victories over Eastern Illinois and DePaul. They put Russ Rose at 1,135. So Dave can draw even with a victory here tonight, and, and this is going to turn into a seesaw battle, it looks like. It's going to be a seesaw battle all year long between the two of them, and I don't think either of them is truly checking any numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Two of the, I mean, just incredible coaches that have yeah. been in the game for so long and watched it transition and grow through rally scoring, side out scoring, uh, liberos, you name it. They've seen the game really change through their years. Taylor Higgins out of the timeout. Pass by Williams. Right side, here's Kemper blocked, kept alive by Jacobson. And Northern Arizona can do nothing but just send a free ball Hawaii's way. Outside, Manuel was a pretty offensive play. And what's nice to see is, is the team actually running transition, a free ball pass, a perfect pass, and running something besides high, middle, back. It's a, it's a play and tie, just they thrive on that. When you beat a team like that, the energy just goes, the momentum changes, and it gives you a lot of great energy. Higgins trying to keep the run going. Biggest lead of this third set for Hawaii. 
Vanderplug is dug up by Mendoza. Mano Leval the dink. Vanderplug there. Back row set to Jacobson against a triple block, was able to sneak it by. You know, she is really having a good night offensively. Jacobson doing a great job way out in front for her team with 10 kills, but hitting out of the backcourt and sneaking that ball down. So here's Kemper. Middle set, McKill. I mean, she gets up there and she just sort of surveys the floor and then gets into it and puts it wherever she wants to put it. And I really like them running that three a little bit further away from the setter. It's really messing up the defense on the other side of the net. They're just used to going straight up and up with her in the front court. Mano Leval over past Williams. McGill couldn't quite put it down. Punched over to the net and McGill and Taylor couldn't really decide as to who was going to get the gist of that swing. And so an opportunity lost for Hawaii. You know, those are those broken plays that really kind of messed you up. The unexpected, and we don't communicate, it happens so fast. And those are the pass. High and away, Greeley. What a save by Williams. Now Jacobson from off the net rolls it over. Middle set, McGill. You know, when it works, it works, and, it, and you just got to keep feeding the fire. You know, somebody keeps hitting away like that, you just keep certain setting her ball after ball after ball, and she's really mixing it up. She's really moving her ball around really well tonight. Such a steady, consistent player, Olivia McGill. Now 11 kills on 20 swings. She's hitting 500. Vanderplug the dink. Diving save, Katiana Ponce. Good job there. Sets up Greeley on the outside, but she missed the court line. Katiana Ponce coming in, serving really well and reading that play very well doing exactly what her role is, a defensive specialist. And here's Hannah Hill, senior from Ventura, California, one of three seniors on the roster. Right side, Nikki Taylor. And that's gonna be a roof and a point for Northern Arizona. She wound up pretty hard on that one, tried to unleash, but it got turned back. Well, she's had her way all night here on the right front, so why not wind up? But you know what? They might have figured her out this time anyways. They sealed that line and took it away from her. And miscommunication is Hawaii. Matador style lets that one hit the floor. And an ace for Northern Arizona's Hannah Hill. And all of a sudden, the Lumberjacks within three trying to extend this match. And Hannah Hill coming in, you know, she's a senior and she's a reserve. And exactly, she's been sitting for a while and she comes in and serves up an ace. And Dave Soji definitely feels the momentum changing and wants to stop it immediately. Hawaii to this point in the match hitting 318 compared to 174 for Northern Arizona. And we, we may as well uh, mention we have, there's another local girl, Kayla Guerrero from uh, Marion High School that's playing for the Lumberjacks up in Northern Arizona. And she was set to play tonight, but in, in uh, practice, passing practice today, she twisted her ankle. And there she is out of Marion High School. And she's taped up really well. And they're hoping that she'll just be able to maybe get in and, and contribute a little bit maybe tomorrow night. Yeah, Ken Murphy was a little bit bummed because he said it wasn't really a difficult play. It was just kind of one of those run of the mill type of moments. And she turned an ankle, uh, it had a little bit of swelling there. So he said, you know, it depends on how she warms up. She did warm up, but she hasn't been inserted into the match yet. And I'm sure he'd love to get her some run. Played uh, with the Imiike Volleyball Club, so with members of the University of Hawaii team. And that is Kayla Guerrero's father, Brian. She also has brothers Brandon and Blaze and a sister, Kiana. So uh, several of the family members making it to the Stan Sheriff Center tonight. You know, it's amazing how many players have come in in this preseason that have Hawaii ties or that have played for Imiike or another volleyball club here in the islands. It just goes to show you the wealth of, of knowledge of players here in the islands. And there is the sports information contact for Lumberjacks Volleyball. Stacey Isobe, he's also a Hawaii guy. Went to Pearl City. They're everywhere. Out of the timeout, Greeley. Big windup, uncoils, but is dug up by Vanderplu. Jacobson over a very lengthy block by Hawaii. They got a piece. Greeley dinks it over. Diving save, Vanderplug. Set goes high and away. Jacobson again against that double block. This time, Kalei Adolfo gobbled it up. And you know she's got ownership on that block when she turns around and completely celebrates. The harder you hit the ball, the harder it comes back. And there we saw it in slow motion. How about Kalei Adolfo? Six kills on seven swings, hitting 857. Throw in three blocks. 
Very efficient effort by the senior captain. And an opportunity for Hawaii here, Greeley against a double block. Here's Jacobson, the dink. Kendra Kelsch, who just was inserted into the match, denied access. And she gets her first solo block. You know, she stays steady Eddie, and she celebrates here. Not a huge attacker on the outside. A dink, and she just stuffs it back. But at 6-1, something that Kendra Kelsch can certainly do to affect the game, her ability to block at the net. Definitely changes the front row appearance. Now she sets Mono Olivao, diving save Williams, bumped over free ball style, so chance for Hawaii Kelsch. Middle set to Adolfo blocked. Mendoza keeps it alive, now out to Greeley off the fingertips. There's Vanderplu. Here's Jacobson, blocked and root. Adolfo and Kelsch again. And Kelsch setting that block, moving Kalea Adolfo in there. She stops her on the inside, reads the set extremely well. And, and post that block, and Kalea Dolfo just putting on a blocking demo right now. Taylor just got it over the net. Another scramble play that winds up a Hawaii point. Northern Arizona just has been a beat off all evening long, and with that, they rise here at the Stan Sheriff Center as Nikki Taylor will serve it up on Aloha Ball for the match. Soft touches it over the pass by Kemper. Here's Jacobson over the double block. Saved Mendoza. Kelsch to Greeley. Great effort to keep it going by Kemper. Jacobson again. One hand save Mano Leval. And a miss hit on the second touch by Kalea Dolfo. Well, again, another spectacular rally. And Ty Mano Leval really playing some great defense, as well as Northern Arizona doing Sidney Kemper just sprawling it out in the backcourt there. The effort has certainly been there for Northern Arizona. Greeley to finish it off the block. Kept alive by Vanderplug. They go right side. Kemper the dink blocked by Greeley. It's bumped back up over the net. So a bump set to Greeley. Off the block and down. And this one is pop. Hawaii wins it in straight sets. A kahi, a lua, aloha. 25-18, 25-15, and 25-18 against Northern Arizona. Well, you know, they really came out, and they started, and they finished. They did an excellent job, in my personal opinion. They put on the gas the whole time tonight. And we saw, perhaps the most to this point now, 10 matches into the season, the most solid and consistent rotation thus far from Dave Shoji. Absolutely, and it's nice to see the team kind of gear together, obviously without Savannah Kamakai, who's, you know, pending injury, but, you know, they did it. They bonded well, and it was nice to see those six starters back out on the court. So first loss of the year for Northern Arizona. Hawaii improves to seven and three. Scott Robbs has Dave Shoji. Scott. Hey, thanks a lot, Kanoa. Well, Coach, you said coming into this weekend, you wanted to work on just getting better. I, I thought you got better tonight. Well, we got off to a good start, and that was key tonight, because we, we've been starting slowly, so we kind of made it a point to just be really energized early, and we did, and, you know, that's not a bad team. I think they'll play better tomorrow. They were a little... I think disoriented, maybe jet lag or something, but they're a lot better than they showed tonight, so we've got to stay on them tomorrow. you got to stay with pretty much a set lineup, all three sets, and you can see the potential of what this lineup can be uh, for you. Well, Nikki gives us some offense on the right, even though she didn't have a great night. She hit too many balls in the net, but you can see that there's potential there. You know, we get kills from all over the court now, including back row, so, you know, it, it has potential. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned that. I was going to say that I thought there was pretty good distribution tonight. You look at the numbers; they're they're pretty evenly distributed. Well, that's what we want. I mean, we're gonna we want to set McGill as much as we can, but um, you know, teams are stacking on her now. But it should open up Ty and Kalei Greeley, and yeah, we'd like to be evenly distributed, but we want to go to our best players as well. All right, tomorrow night you face the same team. First time this year you'll play back-to-back -back matches against the same program. What do you expect them to do differently? Well, I don't know if they can do anything differently, but they're going to play better, trust me, because they, they just were, they're a much better team than they showed tonight. I think it's a little bit of stage fright or I don't know what, but uh, I'm sure they'll stir up the pot a little bit and, and they'll play better, and we need to play better too. What do you need to do better? Well, I don't know if we can do much better. I mean, uh, we served really well. Ty served well. Um, you know, we didn't miss that many. Uh, you know, we just want to improve uh, every night out, and so that's our goal tomorrow. 
Congratulations. Now you're tied as the all-time winningest coach in women's volleyball with Russ Rose. I heard that Russ passed me. You know, they play all those Eastern yeah. teams, you know, and they play like three a night. So, no, I'm just kidding. All right. Thanks a lot, Dave. Back to you guys. <laughs> thanks a lot, Scott. Yeah, doing the old Les Murakami and just stacking games yeah. in the schedule. Uh, let's bring you the players of the match brought to you by Bank of Hawaii. For Northern Arizona, Lauren Jacobson, 11 kills, 6 digs, and a block. Taylor Higgins, we're going to give her the nod. 31 assists, 3 digs, and a block for the Rainbow Wahine. But you heard Scott and Dave Shoji, the distribution of this offense for Hawaii. You had five players with at least six kills. And so much more balance coming to you. And obviously, you are presented that option because of the presence of Nikki Taylor. But now we're starting to see perhaps Hawaii get into a little bit more of a groove and starting to show maybe a little bit more accurately what the identity of this team will be going forward. Well, it's definitely nice to see them evolve. And I'm sure for the coaching staff, it's also really nice to have six players out there that you've wanted on the court that you haven't been able to get on the court at the same time. So it is nice to see, again, Dave's wanting to, knowing that this team is going to be better mm -hmm. tomorrow night. They're definitely not the team that he thinks they are. And... Uh, they just want to get better every time out. There is one thing I think that they can do better, and that's passing the, off of the serve. I thought that their passing wasn't as efficient. It wasn't right to target. But Taylor Higgins does such a nice job of bettering the ball. So this obviously will be the final tune-up tomorrow for Hawaii. What is it important for them to do? Uh, getting ready, basically, the next game is going to be on the road in conference play. Well, I like what I saw tonight. I like a lot of it. I'm, what I'm sharing with you and, and everybody at home is that, and same with the staff, is that they want to keep growing and getting better every time out. So to turn around and do that, which they've already done three weekends in a row, they've played back to back to back. Um, I think they'll be fine, and I think they're definitely getting more and more ready for the season coming up. And they are able to bust out the brooms against Northern Arizona tonight. Again, rematch tomorrow night right here at the Stan Sheriff Center. That'll do it for us. For Lisa Strand Ma'a, I'm Kanoa Leahy. Stay tuned for the post-game show, folks. Hawaii wins in three.